Hey there, everybody. Matt Carter here from CarterMatt.com. And Jessica Carter, also from CarterMatt.com. See? And there goes uh, Harley Cat. I'm not redoing this, <laughs> even though it was a complete mess at the start, just because this is the only time in the history of the Carter Matt YouTube channel that we have ever gotten both Coco and Harley in the video at the same time. This is Blue Bloods. We're discussing the season 10 premiere. And what is exciting about this? I don't know what Coco is doing. <laughs> She looks like she wants to come over there, but then she's not sure, and then she might want to go down, bug the cat. They are sisters, after all. You know how family is. <laughs> and I, I want, we wanted to get the whole family here because it's like this is the metaphorical Reagan family dinner table. You know, we've been calling that forever, except now the pets are like the angry people at the Reagan <laughs> dinner table who, after a fight, like, leap halfway through. A fight. Yeah, we've seen this before, but... <laughs> If all of you have been watching the Blue Buds videos and you don't know Jessica yet, she is a partner at Carter Matt. She's my partner in everything. She is eager to get on here and discuss all things Reagans with me all season long. Yep. We got a lot to discuss this time. We have the return of Lenny, who only shows up when terrible things are <laughs> happening. You have another case, of course, for Aaron. You've got yep. Danny pulling someone out of a burning car, auditioning for the Blue Bloods Firefighter spinoff. <laughs> and you, of course, have Jamie and Eddie. Will they find a place? Will they not find a place? Let's find out. But before you do anything else, if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Every Friday, there is a new Blue Bloods episode. Right here at the channel. Right here. I hope you will join us. All right, Jessica, this is your introduction to the Blue Bloods video world. Oh dear, I'm in the hot seat. Give us your take on the premiere. <sighs> okay, so coming out of the finale, that left me feeling very salty. I was actually going to come on during the finale for the video, but... There was a rage problem. <laughs> there was a rage problem. I couldn't get it together. So now that the summer has passed... Yes. And my rage has gone down, but my saltiness <laughs> remains strong. Over what? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I assumed everybody would be on board with me just, here. Just with in that. case. Just in case. I'm salty over the wedding. Okay. I feel that I was invited to this beautiful event. Their whole promotional campaign was, here's this beautiful invitation. You are invited to this event. I was really excited. I had my wine while I was watching it. And then she walked down the aisle and basically the doors closed and I was sent away. So Record scratch. Yeah. So pissed off, salty over the summer, a little bit salty still, but, but now we're here. So what did I think about the premiere? I had really wished there was going to be a little bit more about the wedding. I knew... I knew there wasn't going to be, but I really wish that there was going to be. So when it comes to at least Jamie and Eddie, I was happy to see a little more focus on the domestic side. So we got to see them talking to everyone or to the sergeant at the station yeah. and being able to be like, hey, yeah, we're married. This is happening now. Where do we go from here? Can we still work together? Can we not still work together? So it was good to see that that was going to be addressed and it was going to be addressed right away. Let's get into this because one of the points that I'm pretty sure all of you heard me make throughout Blue Blood Season 9, I wanted the drama at the precinct when these people found out that these two had kept their relationship from them this whole time. I wanted like anger i wanted someone to just like storm off in a huff i wanted someone to like go into jamie's office and like pour out his coffee all over the floor this is not ncis no he is not going to show <sighs> up and be pissed off that nobody told him about ziva this well, is a different show yes the drama's not in that way this is the thing about blue bloods they operate with subtlety they do. Subtlety is the tool that they grab in the OR. They do not do anything too crazy. They're fine with just having an aisle walk and then a black screen and that's the end of the finale. They don't like to give you what you expect a lot of the time. So they didn't want this to be crazy. Instead, we get this dilemma. Do they work at the same precinct? Or 
Does Eddie want to work the midnight shift? That does not sound fun. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound fun, but it was nice to see her decide to take that shift and that they have their new apartment. And it was really nice, a little cheesy, but I like cheesy, so, you know, it really works for me to see him carrying her over the threshold and bringing new luck into their house and into their lives. I thought I liked it. It was the awe moment of the week. Yeah. But before we even had that, we had what is going to be a tradition. It has been a tradition in these videos before. Your ethical dilemma of the week. <laughs> this yeah. week, will Jamie and Eddie stay at a place because they get the you're a famous cop discount? Yeah, and I I didn't expect that they would. No, it, it, that that is not in their nature. Spoiler alert, most ethical dilemmas on Blue Bloods end with them making the Slightly more ethical decision between the two different sides. Yeah, which is a little bit refreshing because in real life, meh, may, may not have happened that way. So yeah, it's nice to see that. Yeah, Blue Bloods, it's, it's the show that makes you feel have faith in the good of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. and Absolutely we, it does. Yeah, we, we saw that with Jamie and Eddie. So I'm sad there's no Honeymoon episode. I would have liked to see Jamie wearing, like, a really ugly Hawaiian shirt. And, you know, like, at some point during the honeymoon, there would have been, like, a dead body and one of their, like, you know, other of travelers. Course, and then they would course. have to stop the honeymoon and figure it out. And then they would realize, this is our honeymoon, honey, when we're working <laughs> together. And then they kiss, and then oh it's goodness. the end of the episode. No, I, I want my that. credit for this. <laughs> Send me the check. Okay, uh, let's talk about some other stuff. That transpired. Frank and Lenny. The Frank ret and Lenny. We need a nickname for Lenny. Like, I don't want to call him Loser Lenny, because that seems like I'm oh, insulting Lenny. No. And Lenny is no, Lenny's a nice man in some ways. It's just Lenny loses <laughs> a lot at life on episodes that he's on with Blue Bloods. That's not untrue, but no. Loser no. Lenny is off the table. That is not... That, no. I, I can't put my stamp on that. Frank would not approve. No. I do not approve. Frank would throw me out of family dinner for that. And he, Lenny yeah, is he not would. a loser. Lenny is just unlucky Lenny. How about unlucky that? Unlucky Lenny. I'll go with that. That's that's a stamp of approval on that one. Okay, so unlucky Lenny gets into quite an issue in this episode, courtesy of his daughter or daughter and a pickle that she finds herself in. Yeah. So, do we like this storyline? I, I I mean, I think insofar as a Frank story, it's interesting and kind of compelling, but it, I mean, it's also asking a lot because it's not like Lenny is the biggest recurring character in the history of Blue Bloods, and it's like our entire enjoyment of this episode is like staked on this emotional moment. Yeah, it's true, him. and this is a really big moment for him, and not having more of a follow-up with this is might be a little... I, I, I hope that they will bring this back in some kind of form down the road, but this is not that kind of show, so I'm not exactly sure that we'll see anything else from it anytime soon. Probably not. I mean, I will say this. I think we'll probably see Lenny again at some point in the future. Unlucky Lenny. Unlucky Lenny. Unlucky Lenny. Treat Williams has been a little bit unlucky with some of his other gigs as of late. <laughs> Let's not talk about what happened on Chicago Fire, the Treat Williams character, mm -hmm. and, you know, Chesapeake Shores. Guys, like, I don't know, it feels like two episodes are in this current season. I know it's really sick. So he's got some time, hopefully, in his schedule. You can bring back Lenny. Give us a little bring bit more Lenny. Lenny action. And I'd like to know how this relationship is going to unfold. Well, it was a very interesting no. dilemma for Frank because I was actually surprised that there was even a moment that he thought, maybe I should just leave it alone and not say anything. Really surprised by that moment from him. And I know that he's a guy who's conflicted, who does like to think about all sides of the pie and you know where, where everything is gonna fit and where it's all gonna fall before he finally gets to his decision. But that feels like a piece of the pie. I'm not gonna tell Lenny that this is actually not his daughter. That doesn't feel like a piece of the pie at all. Yeah. That does. That feels like no pie. Yeah, that that's not that's not a pie. That's that's something else. That's like a really that's a, like a not good dessert. Like what is a not good dessert? Oh, what is a not rum good dessert? raisin ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't like rum raisin ice cream. So. Well, now I know that. I didn't know that. Well, now I know that. Okay. In the garbage is the rum okay. raisin ice cream. See, Blue Bloods, but this is a chance for all of us to learn together. After 10 years, I'm still learning yeah. about you. There you go. The, the, there's momentous occasions all around, including in this episode. We have a non-Reagan at the family dinner table. This yeah. is episode 200, clearly. Yep. This is Blue Bloods going big, y'all. Yeah, they were. It was, it was interesting to see. It was interesting to see, and I feel like now that this rule has sort of changed, who else do I want to see at the Reagan family dinner table now? Oh, that's an interesting question. Could you imagine Anthony at yeah, that table? Yeah, I was about table? to say, consensus wow. answer. Give me, <laughs> give me Anthony at least two episodes a season at the Reagan family dinner table. <laughs> Have him and Danny just fight for the entire time. He's great. I yeah. really, I have enjoyed his character so much on this show. At some point, we need to do like a uh, like a rankings of like blue bloods, like at, almost like sixth man of the year in basketball. The person who comes out of the off the bench and scores like thirty points in like ten minutes, who like do a lot with not a lot of screen time. It is like I'm not a sports person, so that just take, was like. The rum raisin ice okay. cream in the garbage. It works. It works. Okay. But, okay, here's the thing, though. Anthony, he does a lot with a little. Yeah, He's he got to be on the list. Yeah, he's got to be on the list. Baker does a lot with a little. Baker, yeah. Got to be on the list. There's a lot of good people out there. We had some stuff with Anthony. But since we're already talking about Anthony, let, yep. let's jump in and talk about the Anthony and Aaron storyline. A lot going on here. Yeah, there was a lot going on here, and there was... One thing that I wanted to touch on that was kind of brought up at the beginning, and it was an interesting conversation between Aaron and Anthony that I, I really appreciated the show talking about. And that's about the idea that if a man is out there and he's and taking care of everything and breaking down doors, that he's, you know, a go-getter, good for you, that guy's gonna, you know, Take home for the team. But if a woman's doing it, she's the B word. So it was really interesting to me to see that happening and have that conversation with us, the audience, that they recognize that that's a thing, that Erin, it's something that she has to deal with even though she's just doing her job. What I think it really works about it is a lot of times... Shows will sort of put a line in here, and I think it will make a lot of people think, okay, they're being too preachy, or if they're getting you know, too much on the message. But I think what makes Blue Blood so good about this is you just you listen to it, and you see the characters, and you know the characters, and you're just like, Aaron's just stating you know facts here. These are yeah. facts according to her own life, and it's so believable because it's coming from her, and Blue Bloods is just so matter-of-fact about it. Yeah. Also... Erin had to deal with a little bit more action in this episode. Yeah, she did. It's like, this was a reminder that Erin is, the, in fact, the sister of Danny Reagan. There was a lot of action going on here. We had Erin going in there, guns a-blazing. Then we had Danny kicking open a fiery trunk and rescuing someone like he yeah. was coming out of the, the fiery blazes. It was, uh, there was a lot happening. This was... This was episode 200. Yeah, and, you know, if I'm Donnie Wahlberg and I'm like in a room with the writers and the producers and they're like, it's episode 200, Donnie. What do you want to do? Is this your producer voice? Yes, this is my yeah. producer voice. Bringing see, that yeah. back. You're then, bringing it back. Then Donnie has got to be like, I want to like go into some place that's on fire and do something that's like <laughs> awesome and action hero because like sort of been like performing new kids on the block halfway through the middle of the scene. I think this is one of the most epic things that we could see Donnie Wahlberg do on Blue Bloods. It was pretty epic. It was it was a cool scene. It was a cool scene. We had the return. Maggie the psychic yep. is back. She's come back, and I think now that we've seen her and we've seen this aftermath of the case, which included her almost dying at some yep. point by the end of it, I think we have to consider it firmly on the table as to whether or not Maggie the Psychic is going to be a future Danny Reagan love interest. Yes. Yeah, I, it is a... <laughs> we're, I know... I'm just... For me, yeah. I know there are people out there that like it, and other people might be on the fence. I'm on the fence. And it's not... Because I don't like her. It's not because I don't like him with her. I think I just need to 
feel it a bit more. There needs to be a little bit more than just a, a few episodes. And then we got this one, which was they've, they've now been bonded in a really significant way that yeah. in many ways will accelerate that timeline. People who are about to die, Danny is her savior, has pulled her out of a wreckage, on fire. <laughs> like, it is a bond that these two now have that they will never have with anybody else. So for me, I'm always about a slow ride. I really like that. If you've seen me on channel before, I've talked about that. I love a slow ride into a ship and, and into a romance. And I've only really seen them together a handful of times. But with that, I do feel like it's going to be, if it's going to happen, it's going to be accelerated a little bit. It's a bond. It, it is a bond. I, I, I'm not sure if it's going to ultimately be this relationship that lasts or if this is some sort of red herring. I mean, I think the biggest question mark that I have, and maybe this is intentional on the Blue Bloods writer's part, is that you have Danny, a part of what is a very sort of straight-laced, traditional, by-the-book family. Yeah. And here you have a woman who is a psychic. And yeah. I'm not getting on any sort of high horse or anything else about psychics or anything, but it's just typically people like the Reagans are not ones to believe in the supernatural psychic realm. I do not believe they have, for all you Big Brother fans, Christy Murphy-style <laughs> manifestations in any shape or form. I feel like... It doesn't fully align. Yeah, I feel like it's taken a while for Danny to even open up about this idea of her gift, or as she said, it could be a curse. It's taken a while for him to get there. I can't imagine how long it's going to take other people in the family to get there if Danny decides to go down that road. You know what I want to see? I want to see Frank get a reading. I want to know what that looks like. <laughs> Can that be the 300th episode, CBS? First of all, we got. I guess we should get okay, to the budget. Okay, I'm here for that. Okay, there we go. All right, well, we talked about a lot. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, I want to know what you think. Do you think that Maggie and Danny are a good thing? I mean, there was that moment with Baez as well where she was kind of like, you can get to step in. Don't come around here and start hurting my partner and uh, making him take his ring off and uh, mm -hmm. doing all these things to him. And that was that was cool to see too. Okay, see. So where are you standing on this? I am right While now. While I am firmly on the fence. <laughs> okay, like I am. I'm not climbing off the fence mm -hmm. per se. I'm probably still dangling on it. I am a little bit more in the Team Maggie camp, but not mm -hmm. fully settled down there. Mostly because. You know, I like Baez a lot, but at the same time, I also feel like I like the Baez and Danny platonic relationship so mm -hmm. well because they protect each other. And also, they've already done the partners become lovers thing on Blue Bloods already. I don't think they necessarily need to repeat themselves. And But ultimately, I mean, I don't think Danny needs to have a love interest to be happy. So if they're going to do it, be really darn sure that it's exactly what you want because this isn't really... A love story and I would be just as happy to see a Frank love story as I would a Danny love story yeah I mean I feel like I want to see Danny with someone I don't want it to be that almost all of the Reagan men lose their wives and then that's the end forever and they're just alone forever it doesn't have to be like that for everybody so I would like to see Danny with someone I'm just not, I am not 100% sold yet on Maggie, and I would like to be sold. Well, Blue Bloods writers, now is your chance to sell us this over the course of the next several episodes. Whenever we sell see. Sell it, not raisin rum ice cream. <laughs> Don't turn it into that. No. Sell me, get me on this ship. Get me the like chocolatey fudge and marshmallow mm. with like the caramel thrown in there. Mm. Like, no, okay. what, what, what turned you off there? <laughs> you were so on board. I was on board and then you threw in that caramel and now it's in the garbage with the other ice cream. All right, well, I got to go dig in the garbage, everyone. But for now, I want to know from you guys, what did you think about the Blue Blood season 10 premiere, episode 200? 
Share your thoughts, comments below, and give us a like, subscribe, and you can support us more by checking out the link in the description to the Carter Matt store, and we'll see you here next time.